Forge FC is ready for their upcoming match. Simply stunning stuff. And finally, their goal. My word, what a rocket. Now, let's get you up to date with Anthony Urcioli and Match Day Preview on the Forge Audio Network. Hey, Forge fans, it is the Forge Audio Network. I'm Anthony Urcioli, your digital host, and it is the Match Day Preview. Preview, Forge FC hosting FC Edmonton at Tim Hortons Field in Hamilton, Tuesday night, 6.45 p.m. is the official start time for that match. And it is a match that may, in many cases, under these circumstances, be considered a potential trap situation for Forge FC. Long layoff, 10 days off. They take on the last place team in the CPL, but a club that they have two wins over the last five matches. They've scored uh, five goals in the last two matches. They've they've scored at least one goal in 10 straight matches, have, uh, have Edmonton. And the last time they played Forge, they scored three goals. And Forge had to come back from a pair of deficits to win, and they needed four goals to win that match. So Edmonton has a way of sneaking up on you and catching you off guard. So under those circumstances... This could be considered a trap situation, but Forge is also very aware of the situation. Um, So Forge now looking at Edmonton as their next opponent, who again has been, they've been tricky this year, but it's odd. Um, They've given up a lot of goals. They've given up 28, which is by far the most in the league, but they're also a great defensive team. This is why Edmonton is difficult. They're tough to break down, but they have given up a lot of goals. They don't have the 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 star power or you know the horses to score a lot of goals, but they've been scoring in bunches, two, three goals here and there. So it's it's a tricky team to kind of figure out. So while you can't take them too lightly, let's also not give them too much credit. And um, we'll I'll get into that in, in a bit. But first though, let's talk about the defensive style that Edmonton likes to play against uh, Forge. Who is, I mean, statistically, it's it's off because of all these, you know, some clubs have played 16 matches, Forge has only played 12, the numbers are a little off, but um, Forge, again, one of the better, if not the best offensive team in the league, a team that can score goals, they're going to be facing, and they have this year, a lot, that lower block, team sitting back, forcing Forge into turnovers and mistakes, and then trying to beat them on the counter. Forge is going to face that again, um, undoubtedly, Tuesday night. In Hamilton. Noah Jensen, who um, we don't know whether he's going to start or come or or be a substitute in this match, um, but he spoke in the pre match press conference about those lower blocks. Now, again, you know, Noah's new ish to the pro game. I mean, this is his first year in the pro game. So these lower blocks that he's facing, it's not like anything he's ever really had to deal with. um, in his career, not to this degree anyway. So um, I asked Noah. Facing these lower blocks and these teams that play in these very tight defensive shells, uh, what's it like? Yeah, for sure. It's uh, it's definitely a new challenge that um, we've definitely seen more frequently over the last couple of games. But, you know, it's definitely something that we, we've worked on and we we have bettered ourselves based on the on the past results to kind of learn from those and to to get better against it going forward. And we know that maybe teams are going to try to do that, especially when they play here to cause us some problems. But yeah, we've gotten better at it, and uh, hopefully that shouldn't be a problem for us in the future. Now, a challenge for for Bobby and his staff is keeping the guys ready despite those long layoffs. I mean, human nature takes over in some of these, and we've seen it this year after some lengthy breaks from some clubs. You think you're ready. You you went hard at practice. You're sure, and then the the, the you know the we kick off and. It just isn't there. The, the, it, there. There's some rust. The timing's a little off. It's just it's so hard to um, duplicate that in match intensity that you you get. You can't as much as you try with your own team in scrimmages. It never quite reaches that same level. So uh, so for Forge head coach and technical director Bobby Smirniotis, um, again he's coming in off a long break and he spoke about how he's uh, handled it and how he expects the club to respond. No, I think you you use the days to work on, uh, you know, a multitude of things. One, it's a small period just to make sure our fitness levels are at the right place, um, to make sure that the guys are are also fresh in the right moment, uh, because you don't get many periods like this 
um, to work on a combination of that. So you have to be very careful in how you plan training throughout the, the period where you give the days off and so on. And then from a training component and, uh, and on the ball, it's just more time to work, you know, just get out on the, on the pitch, work on our principles and, and keep on going. You know, it's, it's not the easiest thing to have these periods. It's our second period of, of 10 days uh, um, without a game. And I think the biggest thing is, is you always want to find a rhythm to play matches. Um, we saw that, uh, you know, previously when it was about five games, uh, we'd gone undefeated and just playing on a normal schedule. I think, I think that's uh, that's important uh, as we see it, um, and we see with the, with the other teams. I think there's teams already at the, at 16 matches, and we're sitting at 12. Um, but that's uh, what's there. We take it in stride, and I think it's been a very good uh, 10 days that we've had working here. Um, with the guys and we're ready to play games so Edmonton who's just who's who's it's a young club under some financial restraints that other clubs do not have they don't have again the horses to score a lot of goals so they play this defensive style but they've they've scored this year in in bunches um I'll repeat last two games they've scored a total of five goals um they've scored at least a goal in their last 10 so they haven't been blanked and against Forge, they scored three goals. Uh, Forge is the top defensive club in the, in the league right now in terms of uh, goals and opportunities against. And Edmonton scored three on them. So it's it's tricky trying to figure out what Edmonton is unless you are Bobby Smirniotis. I, th- I think he's aware of what's going on here. And um, he didn't say this. This is coming from me. There's a couple things. Um We'll hear from Bobby in a couple of seconds and his thoughts on Edmonton. But ultimately, this isn't a club that gets a lot of opportunities. They don't get many shots on target. Um, They don't get the ball into their opponent's final third very often. They get very few touches inside the box. So how are they scoring these goals? Is there a little bit of good fortune involved? And at the end of the day, um, you know, like they're in their last three matches, they're Passing accuracy is at 68%. I mean, 68%, like Forge is at 85. And, and there's no club uh, even remotely that low at 68%. It's only Edmonton. So how are they scoring these goals? Let, let's ask Bobby Smirniotis that question. Yeah, well, I think first and foremost, you you play football to, to score goals. Uh, you play the sport uh, to do things. So that means, uh, you know, they're doing what uh, what they should be doing. Uh, putting the ball in the in the back of the net, I think they've become a little bit more vertical as a team uh, in trying to find certain spaces on, on the field. Uh, you know, more direct in, in situations and trying to find the uh, teams uh, out of shape. I think they did a very good job with that against Pacific. Um, I think that was their uh, in their last game um, where they created a lot of opportunities um, and getting in behind there and taking their opportunities. You know, sometimes uh, you create a lot. And, uh, and you score and sometimes you create little, you know, you look at that last game against us, uh, the game finishes 4-3 and they've taken two shots on goal and they've had three goals. So it's, you can look at it in a, in a million um, different ways. Uh, for us, uh, the most important thing is that we do what we need to do. Um, we expect teams, uh, any team to, to come in here and play and, and to want to score goals and to do all of these uh, things, but we need to be uh, playing our football. We need to be on the front foot. We need to be doing what's, what's important for us and, uh, um, that's the biggest message we have with the guys. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Anthony. Next question will go over to Mitchell Tierney. Go ahead, Mitchell. Bobby, um, speaking of the the defensive situation um, with the the ten day layoff, um, how's the the health of the guys looking? I know Alex obviously had a had a bit of an injury and wasn't available last time, and uh, I know Dom's been close. So, um, what's the update on those two guys? Yeah, both of them are fully training. Uh, they're fully into it. We've, uh, we have this game on Tuesday, following up with one on Sunday. So I think, you know, we'll slowly start seeing them back in the, in the lineup in, in one uh, manner or another, just making sure uh, things are, are right. So, you know, from that end, uh, you know, we're, we're getting healthy with, uh, with some of the guys, uh, but at the same time, we have the depth to be able to deal with, uh, with most of these situations. You know, if you asked me earlier in the season, how do you do it without any backs? Uh, you know, I'd be shaking my head, but uh, we've seen that uh, not only, uh, Guys like Abusi Soko who have gone back there, Ashton Morgan played as center back, uh, Janssen, and then Malik, who has uh, become a pro very quick. 
Um, they've all done a great job. So now we're confident as we go forward. Yes, you don't want players to be injured. You don't want to be missing players, but you're confident that guys can slide in, take care of the, the situations at hand. And, you know, slowly, week by week, we're, we're getting the guys back. Those two guys uh, will be back in the, in the lineup this week, and we're just happy to have them in. All right, at the end of the day, um, Ford should be able to take care of business here. There's no reason that Ford should not be able to um, handily win this match against FC Edmonton at home in front of their fans at Tim Hortons Field. And uh, that'll be the challenge. By the way, tickets available now. Show up early. $5 beers before kickoff. And uh, things are going to be moving quick. After a slow week last week with no matches, uh, we have Forge Tuesday night, Forge again on Saturday, and uh, I can't wait. Tickets are available for both matches. Keep it locked onto the Forge Audio Network. Three keys to the match are coming up. Um, Then if I don't see you or talk to you at the game Tuesday night, I will talk to you immediately after the match. So enjoy. We'll talk to you soon. Forge FC is prepared, and now you are informed. This has been Match Day Preview with Anthony Urcioli on the Forge Audio Network. Subscribe on Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts.